when there's some, I guess, driving force that causes you to reject scientific evidence or historical facts, then they do manifest in certain characteristic ways, regardless of what that driving force is. Right. So you can kind of develop a sort of a taxonomy of of behaviors and attitudes and stuff that that characterize denial, and we and we've talked about that a little bit. So there's a paper published by two medical re- researchers, Deed Helm and McKee, that look at different uh, movements that deny a scientific consensus, whether it's climate or evolution or smoking causing cancer or whatever, and they all share these five characteristics in common. So this is a framework that they call the five characteristics of science denial. They are fake experts, logical fallacies, impossible expectations, cherry picking, and conspiracy theories. And so we'll, we have often referred to these as under the acronym FLIC, and we refer back to them a lot. But just briefly for people who are coming to this from the first for the first time, fake experts are people who are kind of posed as experts in a given topic or are trading heavily on credentials in some way to to talk about a topic in a way that is counter to the mainstream but actually have no real expertise or don't have the expertise on the subject matter that 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 they're speaking about so logical fallacies is there's a whole subset of them and and these are just using fallacial arguments to come to a wrong conclusion one of the most common logical fallacies is the non sequitur or jumping to conclusions where someone will say, here's a, here's a premise, here's a conclusion, and the premise doesn't lead to the conclusion, but it, 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 it's, it's very persuasive. It's like it, it, it like it does. Like yeah, it so must obviously follow from... And the most common one in climate change is that climate has changed naturally in the past, therefore what's happening now must also be natural. Right. One of the reasons why the climate is changing is because the climate has always been changing. There has never been a time when the climate has not changed. The third one is impossible expectations. And this actually comes up a lot just in recent weeks is this this argument that there is some uncertainty in right, climate right, science. Right. We're and demanding therefore, perfect certainty and like just completely impossible expectations. Yeah. And so the fourth one is cherry picking. Right. And if you've never heard of this, this is basically like if there's a lot of data, you, you just choose or you choose an example that, that goes counter to the overall picture um, to argue that, that the conclusions are wrong or that it's not happening. So like we see this a lot where like it will be like a cold winter in the United States and then people will be like, ah, ha, ha, no global warming. Right. Or, or even a cold day. Right. I asked the chair, you know what this is? It's a snowball. And that's just from outside here. So it's very, very cold out. Uh, and the fifth is conspiracy theories. What is an example of conspiracism? I mean, the the one that I often use in my talks is just the famous or infamous Trump tweet. When the evidence is overwhelmingly against what you want to believe, then these these five characteristics are kind of inevitable. And the reason why it's important is because if you're not aware of these traits of denial, then you become vulnerable to being influenced or, or tricked by them. You know, one of the first things I would say is like everybody should be aware of this stuff just to guard against it in your own life. But then, you know, so you don't fall into it. But, you know, I mean, more broadly, we're talking about this stuff so that you're not persuaded by them. 